Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Holly and I'm a freelance illustrator. In today's video, I'm just going to be doing a relaxing paint and chat video. I asked for some questions on Instagram. I'll leave my Instagram handle below. And I just wanted to talk about things that weren't too taxing, weren't too stressful, because it's 2021 and I don't know about you, but I'm already quite stressed with this year and everything that's going on. And in the UK, we're probably at the worst moment in the pandemic so far so i'm feeling a little bit anxious and i just wanted to make some content that might relax you that you could put on in the background that you can look up at occasionally if you want to see me painting so i'm going to be painting a monkey puzzle tree which is from my illustrated game which is out now called tree vision it's written by tony kirkham i'll leave a link to that in the description as well but yeah i'm going to be painting a monkey puzzle tree and i'm also going to be painting these bark cross sections all of these illustrations feature in the tree vision game but before we get into the painting part of the video i just wanted to talk quickly about the sponsor for this video which is skillshare Skillshare is an online learning community, a platform with millions of curious learners and creatives taking classes on a whole host of topics, from illustration to music production, creative writing to entrepreneurship. It's a great place to explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in your creativity. What's cool is that Skillshare has been curated with learning in mind, so there's no ads to interrupt you, and what's more, they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay committed to learning. It's also less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. The class I wanted to recommend to you today is a brand new one that I was really excited about. It's called Revolutionary Self-Care, Embrace, Nurture and Grow Your Authentic Self, and the tutor is Jadira Aguru. She's an activist and author of What a Time to Be Alone. She also has an amazing TED talk that I'll leave linked below, and I just thought her class looked really amazing because I don't know about you, but I have lost a bit of my self-confidence lately, and I could do with having my self-esteem perked up. This class is all about recognizing your authentic voice, how to start using affirmations that really work for you, having the strength to ask for help, and nurturing and investing in yourself. If you'd like to give Chidira's class a go or any of the others on Skillshare, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description of my video will get a free trial of premium membership so you can try out the service for yourself and explore your creativity. If you decide to stay after that, Skillshare works out at less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So here I am painting the monkey puzzle tree, one of my favourite trees. Uh, they're not native to the UK, but we do have some, and whenever I see them in people's gardens and things, I always point them out because they look so majestic and interesting. So before I get into the questions that I've been asked, I thought I would just explain a little bit about what you can see here. So I am a watercolour artist, and my favourite kind of paints are the Windsor and Newton tubes. I never um, use anything else apart from watercolour tubes and I use colours from both the cotton and the professional range and the brushes that I'm using in this footage I think are the ones from Jackson's Art which is an online store, an online art store that I really like and they are the Studio Synthetic range. I will leave a list of the, of the sizes that I most frequently use in the description. So the first question or suggestion of what I should talk about that I have is anything nature related slash things I've noticed on my walks. So some of you may know that I've been trying to enjoy winter more. It's not a season that I really enjoy and I can often feel quite sad and down in the winter, especially January, February when spring feels so far away. I've been saying to my patrons that I've been really enjoying the winter skies this year. So sunsets and sunrises and all the pink and all the light that travels across the sky and the clouds just seem really dramatic. I've also been noticing the really hardy plants that stay 
um, that stick it out throughout the cold weather. So clover, strawberries, wild strawberries, sorrel, things on the forest floors. Um, I'm also really enjoying the look of seed heads. <laughs> this is a weird thing to talk about. Um, but from all the native species of plants that die off um, in the winter, they just leave their seed heads and it, it they just look quite it's just quite a lovely sight to see them all swaying in the breeze and um, collecting frost on them in the mornings. They're just quite architectural in a way, just the shapes of the seed heads. Question number two is, what are some things that make you feel comforted? My first thought to answer this question was slowing down. I love slow living, I love the idea of slow living, I watch a lot of slow living content on YouTube um, and I would like to work out how to have a slower existence, how to work less and be more in the moment and be more present. Um, so I really enjoyed my Christmas break and being able to slow down even though we didn't see anyone, we didn't have any Christmas plans, it was just so lovely. I also just really love reading, the act of reading just chills me out like nothing else. I like being silly with my husband, we have the weirdest sense of humour that I will never be able to explain. And also cuddling my dogs is a very important way that I feel comforted and relaxed. Just cuddling a warm furry body is so relaxing. Question number three, what are some books that I would like to read next? Well, I can tell you what's on my reading list at the moment. I am currently reading four books at the same time, which I don't normally do, but I'm finding that um, I kind of want to switch things up on a daily basis, depending on what kind of mood I'm in. I'm reading Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. I'm also reading The Death of the Artist, How Creators Are Struggling to Survive in the Age of Billionaires and Big Tech. This was a book that Craig heard about on a podcast and I just, I think I've had it recommended to me before and it just seems perfect for me to be reading right now. It's by William Dereziewicz, I think that's how you say his surname. So far, really enjoying it. I think it's going to be a really important and informative book for me. Um, and yeah, and the fiction books I'm reading currently, Burnt Shadows by Camilla Shamsi, and I'm also reading Pigs in Heaven by Barbara Kingsolver, and I've written in brackets, My Bay, because she's one of my favourite writers ever, and I'm loving this series, because Pigs in, Pigs in Heaven isn't, but the Pigs in Heaven is a sequel to, um, what's it called, The Bean Trees, some of her earlier f fiction. Next question is, any new things that I hope to try this year? Cooking, art, hobbies. My answer doesn't contain any cooking, arts or hobbies. Um, the, the answer I have is that I would, I would like to try to learn to drive this year. Obviously that's quite difficult at the moment with the full force of the pandemic collapsing around us. Yeah, I'm nearly 33 and I don't know how to drive. This hasn't really been a problem in my life so far, but um, I'm just feeling like I really would like to get that done. Craig and I take any trips, I can help with the driving and things like that. I would also like to learn how to do more DIY. We are currently renovating our studio and we've had to do a lot more of it ourselves than we were expecting. Again, because of the pandemic and having people in our house and stuff like that. So um, we just had a weekend where we sanded all of our floorboards. I said that weirdly, floorboards. Um, they're really old, 100 year plus old floorboards that have been kind of haphazardly mended over the years, so they're really higgledy piggledy. But we used an industrial um, sander and worked really hard on them, and they actually look pretty alright. I mean, there's lots of holes in them, but they look good. And it was quite satisfying to do that, so I'd like to learn about more beginners DIY tasks that I can do. So um, I'm going to make a cupboard door, that's one of my tasks up, up in the studio. Um, and yeah, I'd like to grow more vegetables in the spring when the weather warms up, learn about growing new crops. Question number five. Is there any update on my dogs? 
and are there any funny personality stories I can tell. So, Quentin and Midge. Quentin, my pug. Midge, my greyhound. They're both doing okay. Um, Quentin had an eye op recently. He had both of his eyelids shortened so that they don't rub on his eyeballs. Um, so he had a couple of weeks where he was wearing contact lenses whilst his eyes healed. Um, but he's, he's perfectly healed from that now and I'm really happy with that operation because hopefully it will just help maintain his eyesight for the rest of his life. Um, and Midge is doing good. He seems stronger, he seems more energetic. He uh, went through a bit of a time when we were worried that he was having arthritis because he, well, I think he did have, a, have an arthritis flare up because he's only got three legs, so he does have aches and pains from um, using his front leg a lot and his back legs um, are kind of all out of balance as well and he has kind of hip problems sometimes. Um, but lately he just seems really strong and he wants to go on longer walks and he's just not as exhausted on them and just having a great time. Some funny stories about them. <laughs> uh, Quentin, our pug, recently endured a sex injury. <laughs> he um, he has a habit of like sneaking into our spare bedroom and humping um, a stuffed toy and um, yeah, he got a blockage and he had to be rushed into the emergency vets and he could have got very seriously ill because he couldn't pass any urine or anything but he it was all sorted, it was all fine. Um, I think he had to have an operation. Yeah, he did. He had to have a little op. Um, so yeah, he had a sex injury recently. <laughs> and Midge, what I've got written down is that he beats his dad up in the morning. <laughs> Cray gets up in the morning to feed them. Midge will stand up on his back legs and just punch Craig in the back with his big front paw. He's, he's quite violent when he's hungry. What places would I recommend visiting in the UK? Number one would be the West Highlands of Scotland, maybe one of my favourite places on earth. Um, I also have written down Kilda, which is um, a, part, a part of Northumberland, beautiful deep forests there, some of the darkest skies in the UK, and the beaches in Northumberland can be really amazing too, really dramatic and really expansive. Um, I also really like the Brecon Beacons and the Shropshire Hills are also beautiful. Question number seven, how have I adapted my business in COVID times? So I've been very lucky in that I've still had work to keep paying the bills and everything. And I felt, I didn't, haven't felt like I've needed to do that whole stressful thing of finding government help if there is any for, which I know a lot of freelancers have had to do during this time. So I've been so insanely lucky that I've had some client work to keep me ticking over. I've also had my patrons who've been supporting me, which is so amazing and so appreciated. Um, and yeah, some just little bits of revenue from other places like YouTube, I make some money from YouTube as well. So I've been so lucky that actually my business hasn't been too affected. Um, the, only way, the only way it's been affected has been through choice. Um, I haven't opened my shop for Christmas because the postal so service was just really overwhelmed and um, yeah, it's been very chaotic in the UK um, and EU shipping is also a bit crazy because of Brexit and, um, and we had that new variant of Covid in the UK so um, that really put a massive delay on postage so I've just had my shop closed for a long time, I just haven't had the capacity to open it. I will open my shop this year at some point I think. What is my bedtime routine? I'm not very good at going to bed. I stay up too late, but if I'm being good, best bedtime routine would be to have a bath, take a book in there, put on the Call the Midwife soundtrack. For some reason, that just really relaxes me and really just gets me into bath mode. You should try it. <laughs> Maybe I'll leave it linked below if I can. Um, and then I like to put on lavender essential oil and not look at my phone when I lie down in bed. That's very important. Question number nine. What are my favourite plants slash trees? My favourite trees are rowan twee trees, rowan trees. I like beech too and larch. I love any ancient tree whatsoever. Like the more ancient and decrepit the better. I love it when they start developing that chasm in the middle of them, that hole that opens up and yeah, I just love imagining all the different generations of people that have walked underneath ancient trees and what they've what they've witnessed in their lifetime and plants massive obsession for wild orchids i can't wait to go wild orchid hunting in the spring and the summer
especially looking for bee orchids this year. I've not seen them, but I know they are about locally. They're not that common, but I really would love to see them this year. My last question is a bit of an obscure one. Um, what are some of my favourite smells? I love this question because you don't often get asked that, do you? And yeah, I just think I think focusing on the senses is probably a way of de-stressing. Um, my some of my favourite smells: hmm. chocolate, fresh bread, sweet peas, lavender, geranium, grapefruit. The smell of dogs when they come in from a crisp walk outside. Toasted hazelnuts. Smell amazing. <laughs> Mostly food orientated smells are what I go for. That's the end of the questions and that's the end of this video. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this content and for helping keep my channel afloat. I really appreciate it. And I also really appreciate the people that interact with my sponsorships. It just really helps. And um, thank you to my patrons for all of your support. You are my favorite people on the internet. Yeah, thank you to everyone who's watched this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and leave any questions you might have in the comments. Leave any suggestions for videos you'd like to see from me this year, just to give you a little update of where I am. Um, for the next few months, up until April, I'm going to be working flat out on, on client work. I've got a big project that I'm working on um, and it's really building up, um, so I'm not going to be able to dedicate as much time to content. There will definitely be a monthly video on my channel, so look out for that and There'll be some updates and things on Instagram. But if you'd like to see more behind the scenes, there's always Patreon. There's a fortnightly video that goes up there. But then after my client deadline, I would like to make more content because this is the year that we move up into our newly renovated studio up on the top floor of our house. And I can't wait to film some videos in there and to show you around. I'm hoping that the second half of this year will be much more content and personal work focused. So I hope you stay around for that. If you are new here, please subscribe and please like this video. I look forward to reading your comments and I will see you again soon. Bye!